Well, good afternoon. I'm Michael McGinnis uh, from the Institute of Medicine, and it's my wonderful pleasure and privilege uh, to welcome all of you uh, to the Institute of Medicine uh, and to our wonderfully restored uh, historic National Academy of Sciences building. Uh, this year, as you may have seen on the uh, uh, video kiosk as you came in, this year is our sesquicentennial uh, year. Uh, uh, and um, those of you who are, and there may be some, uh, watching from our boardroom just behind me, since we're oversubscribed and we have that uh, capacity available with video uh, feed, uh, we'll be watching uh, not only um, uh, on the very nice monitors that the uh, Academy has put up, but under the overview of President Lincoln, a wonderful portrait of President Lincoln and the assembled scientific community of 1863, uh, which was the year that the uh, Congress passed uh, the charter for the National Academies uh, and President Lincoln uh, signed that charter. 1863 obviously tells us that the National Academy of Sciences was founded uh, during a war uh, that led to fundamental progress in extending and deepening uh, the democratization of our uh, political and social processes across the citizenry. And in many ways, uh, it's entirely fitting then that we're having our conversation here today uh, on patient partnering in the National Academy of Sciences building. You know, without uh, overplaying the comparison, uh, it seems appropriate to point out that this workshop, partnering with patients to drive shared decisions, better value, and care improvement, uh, is aimed at a further expansion of citizen empowerment, uh, dedicated as it is uh, to the democratization and deepening of the direct engagement of each individual uh, as participant and as advocate in the effectiveness uh, and the efficiency of their health care and in the capture of each care experience to improve the knowledge base uh, that's the bedrock for medicine's progress. Before we move into the day's proceedings, uh, in addition to thanking each of you who are here as presenters and participants, um, I'd like to acknowledge and thank in particular uh, three groups that have been especially central uh, to making our meeting possible. Uh, first, uh, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation and the Blue Shield uh, of California Foundation uh, for their generous support in sponsoring and leading the discussions up to the meeting. With us today are uh, George Bolin and Dominic Frosch uh, from the Moore Foundation. George, I saw you here somewhere, and there he's back there in the audience. And Richard Thomason uh, from the Blue Shield of California Foundation. Richard, Richard's right here. Uh, thanks, uh, obviously, to both of you and your colleagues uh, for the support. Second, uh, thanks to the planning committee uh, and its chair, Christine Bechtel. Uh, the meeting is being hosted by the IOM Roundtable on Value and Science Driven Healthcare in accordance with the National Academies. Uh, rules and procedures, uh, an independent planning committee whose roster is in your folders, uh, has organized the workshop uh, with the support of the IOM staff, and they clearly have done a terrifically superb job. Um, uh, and uh, when you look at the list of planning committee members, you'll know why uh, it's turned out so well. And that brings me uh, to the third group, the IOM staff, in particular to Lee Stuckart, who has since moved on to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, at Julia Sanders with the guiding hand of uh, Dr. Claudia Grossman, our senior program officer, uh, coordinating the work, and also assisted today by Valerie Rohrbach, Barrett Zimmerman, and Liz Johnston, who are all here uh, to facilitate the session. So please join me in thanking the foundation, uh, the planning committee, and the IOM staff for their work today. Just a few other quick things to flag uh, before I 
uh, turn uh, to stage setting comments from Dominic on behalf of uh, Moore and Christine on behalf of the Planning Committee. Uh, first, uh, each of you has received, in addition to the wonderful briefing materials that were assembled uh, by the staff uh, and with the recommendations of the Planning Committee, uh, you've also each received a folder uh, that contains uh, the agenda, the participant list, and supporting materials, uh, as well as um, a little map of the building uh, to navigate uh, uh, you to the various uh, loci important uh, to the course of the conversation uh, and um, background materials from the recent uh, and important health affairs special issue uh, on the issue of patient engagement including both the table of contents from that issue uh, and uh, uh, one of the key articles uh, that was uh, included. And on the left hand side in addition to the background material and agenda for the meeting uh, is a um, one-page piece that uh, provides an overview of uh, the strategy map uh, for the work of the roundtable. Uh, and I mention that in particular, I draw it to your attention because on the back of that strategy map, it's a color piece, uh, is uh, a list of the ongoing projects uh, that are underway in the various collaboratives uh, of the roundtable, uh, which underscores the essence of this uh, meeting's focus on action. Uh, what we want, in effect, is to come out of the series of conversations with an action agenda uh, that will allow us uh, to be more focused as we work collaboratively uh, across our various uh, organizations uh, to foster progress. If you look at the three clusters into which uh, those projects group, the cluster on value in improving the science of transparency, the cluster on science and knowledge generation as a real-time uh, product or project, and on the notion of stronger public and patient engagement this conference uh, focusing on the patient as a vital leader for each of those three aims, value, science, uh, and decision making, uh, is obviously clear. This conference, in effect, uh, is setting the stage uh, for success across all of those uh, three domains. Uh, and we're very hopeful uh, about the outcomes of the discussions as, as providing guidance uh, for the work ahead. Uh, finally, uh, in the way of background comments, and most important uh, when it comes to action, is to acknowledge those of you in the room who are uh, participants in the session here and who bring to this conversation uh, the kind of commitment that uh, is so important uh, to the progress Ahead. The Planning Committee has worked very hard to ensure that this is truly a patient-centered uh, set of discussions. Of course, each of us at one time or another is a patient and witnessed the sling here, uh, and bring occasionally painful perspectives uh, to uh, these sorts of discussions. Uh, but in addition to the prominent cadre of attendees uh, from the patient community we have uh, throughout the uh, room and throughout the agenda. Some of the sessions are organized with patients as co-presenters uh, in order to ensure uh, that uh, the perspectives um, uh, are truly representative uh, of the issues at hand. We also have uh, here in the room individuals uh, uh, who uh, have built and are building uh, important uh, organizational capacities to lead change and help uh, foster follow-up to our discussions. I can't possibly call out uh, each one, but examples uh, among you include Michael Berry, the president of the Informed uh, Medical Decisions Foundation, David Blumenthal, the president of the Commonwealth Fund, Helen Darling, the president of the National Group on Health, Business Group on Health, Bob Kaplan, the director of uh, NIH's Behavior and Social Sciences Institute, 
uh, Ligia Ricciardi, who's the head of consumer health at ONC, John Santa of Consumer Reports, Sue Sheridan, who heads patient engagement at PCORI, Dan Wolfson, who's the chief operating officer at the EBIM Foundation. And, you know, really, we could go down each and every seat in each and every row, uh, and it would become clearly evident to us, as if it hadn't, isn't already, uh, that this room contains uh, the kind of leadership uh, that can really make a difference moving forward. Uh, so uh, please take advantage of our time together to link, uh, uh, deepen your links with e each other on behalf of our mutual commitments uh, to progress. Now it's my privilege to turn the meeting over to those who will frame the sessions. Uh, first, Dominic Frosch, who will speak on behalf of the sponsors uh, to put the meeting in the context of the Moore Foundation's uh, plans for leadership in the arena, and following his comments, Planning Committee Chair Christine Bechtel will lead us into the agenda. Thank you all very much.